What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Key Smash Studios video. Today we're going to talk about how to set up your own personal dedicated ARC server for free. And we'll go through the steps, step by step, how to do it. It's pretty easy. It shouldn't give us much trouble. So if you like what you see today, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, all that jazz. It really does help us out. And we'll hop right into this. So the first thing you're going to do is go down to the description below, you're going to find a link to this page that I'm on right now. This is for a program called Arc Server Manager. This program is a much simpler and much easier way to do this for free. And it turns the process into a really simple UI interface, and you don't have to worry about any code or anything like that. So go to this link, grab this installer. You can download it as a zip or an exe. It's really simple. You just install it. Now, once you install it, you're going to run it. And when you do run it, it's going to say, I want to run this as an administrator. That's totally normal. You definitely want to give this as an administrator. Um, once you hit that, it's going to do that little pop-up thing. And then you're going to hit, yep, I'm good. And it's going to open up this program. Now, mine has a server set up on it. So when you open it, it'll open up onto a new server like this. It'll have an unnamed server. It won't have an install location, anything like this. It'll just be totally blank. The only thing you'll see up here is your public IP address up here, which I will have blurred out because I don't want to give out my public IP address. You're free to change anything you would like on here. If you would like to name your server, like test server or something like that, you can do that. You can change the password. You can change the admin password and the spectator password. There's some really important ports that we should focus on here. First, you're going to choose your internal connections. So this is going to be your local IP address. If you don't know what your local IP address is, it should be the first one that pops up here. Or if you'd like another way to tell about it, you need to go into your command prompt and we're going to type IPCONFIG, IPConfig. And we'll look here and we'll see that our local IP address pops up here under IPv4 address. That's a super important bit of information. We'll come back to that in a bit, but we also need to make sure that we have ports here. The default ports are 7777, 7778, and 27015. We'll get to this in a little bit, like I said, but these are important bits of information we need to keep in mind for later in the video. Coming down to our next most important section here, we are going to select the map. So these are all the default maps that you can put into the Arc Server Manager. For example, any of the DLC maps you can select here. If you want to make a Ragnarok map, you just simply select Ragnarok. If you want to do any total conversions like Primitive Plus, you can select that here. And if you want to put any mods on Steam, you can put them here. You'll need the ID number. So if you go to Steam and let's say you would like a flyer mod in Arc, would you like classic flyers? If you come to the Steam page of that flyer mod, you can find the ID number up here in the URL. So you just Google Classic Flyers Arc or whatever it is that you want to find. You're going to copy this ID, go back to your Arc Server Manager, and you're going to paste it right here in the mod IDs. And you're just going to separate those with a comma. So if you had a different mod, you could pretend that that's a different mod and just separate them with a comma and you can put as many mods as you want, paying attention to the fact that if you do install mods, sometimes you need to mess around with the order of the mods so they all work properly. The map, if you use a dedicated map, needs to come first. You can change anything like saves, message of the days, auto login things. These are all things that is pretty much self-explanatory. But I do want to talk a little bit about some of the more common things that you change in an Arc server. So for example, if you come down here to the Dino settings, you can change, for example, that flyers can carry other players and dinosaurs. So that's pretty important in my opinion. That's a big part of Arc. You can change multipliers. You can change how much damage, resistance, water drain, any of these things. These are just sliders and you just click and change them. If you hover over the text, it'll tell you which way you need to do it. So for example, if you would like harvesting to do more damage on dinosaurs, you come to this harvesting damage here. It says that higher values increase the damage rate. So as long as it's above one, you are adding a multiplicative value to the damage rate of dinosaurs. So this will do 213% of normal damage. 
As we come down here into the dyno settings, we can see that these are pretty similar, but also important. You can change the maximum number of dinosaurs a tribe can have an arc. I usually put this at the max, and I put the number of dinosaurs at the max as well. Because if it's a dedicated server, you don't really want to be limited by anything like that. You can change torpor, food drain, things like that. If you want to change the passive tame interval to be much faster, you can do that here too. That's called the passive tame interval. Things like allowing flyers in caves is really important and is pretty cool, so you can check that here. You can also turn on and off any particular dinosaurs that you don't like. So if, for whatever reason, you decide that the dire wolf is the worst part of Ark, you can just uncheck this box and it's no longer tameable. If you decide that you would like to change some of the environment, things like the amount of dinosaur spawns, the taming speed, harvest amount, resource things, you can find all that stuff in the environment. I typically double the dinosaur spawns and the taming speed on my servers, but that is just a personal opinion. You can also put custom harvest amount multipliers here. I've never really messed with this, but if you would like for one dinosaur to harvest more um, resources from a certain type, you can do that here. You can also change the day-night cycle here. So if you'd like your days to be longer, you would want to slow down the day cycle speed. So make that days pass by 33% at the rate that they normally do. And time of night, you can do the exact opposite. If you want night to increase, you increase it further this way, so on and so forth. I'm not going to go through every single part of the administration and all the different settings in this. You're free to go through each one. And like I said, you can come to each one and it'll tell you which way you need to, to change it. Once you have a certain group of settings that you like, what you're going to do is you're going to come up here and you're going to hit save. And what this does is it saves an INI file, just like you would if you were doing this manually, with all these different settings. And it says, you know, when you boot the server, we want these settings applied. The next thing that we need to do is actually install the actual server. So you can come here to, to this little folder right here. You can change the install location. I'm not going to change it because I've already set this up. But if you would like to, this is a slightly larger file. So go ahead and move this to an alternate drive or something like that if you don't want to have it clutter up a, a faster drive. So I've set this already. You can change it to wherever you want just by clicking this folder and you can find it. Once it's there, you can hit install. And what it's going to do is it's going to pop up this window, which isn't going to tell us much. But then after it pops up this window, it's going to open up something called Steam CMD. This should be part of the install that you saw earlier. And if I click on this little Steam button, you'll see that there is a command window that is talking to Steam CMD. And it's going to go through its process of installing the server. It's going to go through pre-allocating and then through the install process. And when it's done, this window will close. This window will pop back up and it'll say that it is done installing. So I will come back when this is finished installing. This does take probably somewhere around five to 10 minutes for me, depending on how fast or slow your internet is. It might take a little bit shorter or it might take a little bit longer. Now, once that's finished installing, you may or may not see this installed version change. Sometimes you need to reboot your computer for it to update, but if I come to my other server here, you'll see that I have an installed version here. We're going to work on port forwarding now, which is probably the most diff challenging part of this process, but it's really not too bad. I'll go through step by step, provide an example so we can go through and do this together. Once we install the server, we need a way for the server to interact with the internet. If you'd like a video on how port forwarding works, I will put a link here in the video. So you can watch that and learn about port forwarding. But for right now, we're going to go to port forwarding and set that up for everyone. So the second thing you're going to grab from the description is a link to this website. It's called portforward.com. You can come here and find a list of all routers. They don't necessarily have every router in the world. So if they don't have yours, I apologize. You can probably just Google your router name and find port forwarding. But if they do have your router, what you're going to do is you're going to find your router in your house. That's going to be the little box that goes into your house. It's probably going to have some cables running in and out of it that look like internet cords. So once you find your router, you're going to find the make and model of your router. So if you come here on the left side, you'll find list of all routers. You can click on that. And let's say that you find that you have a gigabyte style router. 
you can click close on this. You do not have to buy this. That is not what we're here for. We're here for the guides. So you say you have a gigabyte style router and you have the B40. If you come here, click on gigabyte, then click on the B40. This provides you with a step-by-step -step guide for your individual router on how to set up port forwarding. Every router is gonna be different. I will show you on mine, but it will not look the same as yours. Usually when you go to your router, it's gonna have some type of login. In my case, I've already logged in, but this is my particular router. I'm gonna to go to advanced, advanced setup, port forwarding. Now here we'll see all the ports that I have already installed on my router, but if you would like, I will go through the process of creating a custom service. Remember how I said on our Arc Server Manager how we had ports that were important? We said that the important ports were 7777, 7778, and 27015. We're going to set those up now. So if we do like Arc 2, UDP, TCP, 7777, and we're going to end that with 7778, and we're going to assign this to our personal computer. Earlier on, we were discussing how we can get our internal network from our command prompt. Again, that's IPCONFIG, IPConfig. This will tell us our local IP address. Additionally, you can also find it here in networking of Arc Server Manager. So mine is 192.168.0.25. This is my internal IP address. We want my internal IP address to match that here. So 192.168.0.25, and then I'm gonna hit apply. Once that's applied, we're gonna do the same thing for our other one. So TCP UDP for 27015. This is what's gonna allow it to be listed on the Steam servers. 27015 for 192.168.0.25, and we're gonna hit apply again. So once you're ready to boot the server, what you're going to do is you're going to come over here, you're going to click start. And what this is going to do is this is going to open up a program right here like this. It's this, this screen here. And the first thing it's going to list is all the resources it's using on your computer. This is not the server booting. This is just it logging what it's going to be using. Now this can take some time. As the first time it loads, it usually has to create like data files relating to where the dinosaurs are spawning. Um, it doesn't create the map, but it does create the save locations once you start booting it. So this can take a while the first time you create the server. So just be patient. It takes me about five to 10 minutes the first time I boot up a server. Depending on your internet, it may be faster or slower there. All right, so once it fully boots up, you'll see some other text here. It'll look like this. It'll say Primal Game Teta took so long to do. And then it'll say it'll successfully started. And then it'll say the number of cores that it's using. And then talk about like the ports and, and the, the map that it's running. So once that's successfully booted, your server is up and running. And assuming you port forwarded correctly, you should be able to find it within Steam itself. If you would like to test that, you can come up here to view on Steam, hit servers, and then you can hit add server, and you can type in your external IP address and then a colon and then the 27015 port. And then that, if you hit find games at this address, will tell you whether or not Steam can see your server. So that's a really quick way to test to see if your server is working. If it is, great. If it's not, you probably need to look into port forwarding. In any case, I hope this has been helpful. Please let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions, comments, concerns with this at all. If you really like what you've seen today, please feel free to browse the links in the description below from our Twitch chat to our Patreon. There are several links there which you can find that will support us. As always, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help us out, and hopefully we'll see you next week.